what we're talking about today is the pastor's wife. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions around it. There's a lot of uh, innuendos. There's a lot of uh, assumptions and people think these people are living a nice life. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. <laughs> and, and you guys have been married for? Uh, almost 11 years, 11 years 11 in January. Years. Yeah. Is there a time in that 11 years we felt like, what am I doing here? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what? I respect your honesty. Absolutely. Oh, my word. What are the misconceptions that you've, you've, and I've seen that, especially white churches, you guys are more liberal, you know? You can, <laughs> you know, you can you do your own things, you know? You're not governed by a lot of laws, you know? You just, mm. I've seen a, a white church and they were, the guy, pastor was preaching in shorts, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I've seen that too. <laughs> That's cool. I'm like, for, do you guys draw salaries from the church? Um, not at the moment. At the moment, we have full time jobs. So We've got full time jobs. Full time jobs. Both my husband and I. Um, we felt like that was the right thing to do. So. You said your mother in law died of cancer. Yeah. And your and your son was deaf. Yeah. And your mom now has cancer. My mom now has cancer. It's crazy. Sure. I think that's like people feel like, you know, hard times don't come to pastors or come to Christians. It's, the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Wait a minute. Can we <laughs> pause it right there? Okay, yes. Your father-in-law didn't give your husband, Jonathan, no. the church. So he gave it to another. somebody else. So, yes, he gave, he handed the church over. People like to say we sold the church. That's mm. the biggest load of nonsense I've ever heard. We literally handed the church. Our ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us once again on the Gospel Reality Podcast. And today is like no day. Uh, we've, we've, we've this is a this is a new thing. This is a new thing, uh, and you see why. You know, we decided to bring color to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to mix things up a bit. But without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that you uh, like and share our content on the Gospel Reality Podcast, the GRP Podcast on youtube we see the comments we see the inboxes and we see the whatsapp uh, messages sure we can't resp- reply to all of them but please keep encouraging us and ladies and gentlemen like i said today we're talking about something i don't think we've ever spoken about and it's going to be the first time we give you the title of what we're actually talking about on the podcast what we're talking about today is the pastor's wife you know there's a lot of misconceptions around it there's a lot of uh, innuendos. There's a lot of uh, assumptions, and people think these people are living a nice life. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But today, I've got a, a Mrs. Karina and Lindley. Hi, how are you, Katie? I'm good, and how are you? Good. Thanks. Did I pronounce your your name correctly? You did. You did. Yeah, well yeah. done. <laughs> and and the most important thing I need to tell people when when people say white people are on time. <laughs> White people are on time, guys. Eh? <laughs> you must take notes. <laughs> she arrived um, 12 minutes before. <laughs> uh, we, we normally wait 20 minutes after. but I needed time to make sure I knew where I was going. Uh, I, <laughs> still. <laughs> still. Still. But thank you very much for joining us. It's great to be here. And uh, it was so easy to, 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 to deal with you. Thank you. And what, and what, pe- what people don't know is when I asked your husband if I could talk to you, when you when you when you when I WhatsApped you, I was like, "Hey, we've had a long conversation before," yeah. and it's because I've I've been to your house a couple of times, right? <laughs> yeah. And I must say, your house feels like a it's, it feels like a home. You yeah. Know? You know. Yeah. Well, it it, it really feels like a home. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. And people don't understand that with your position, it, uh, trying is. It's not trying, it's doing <laughs> hard work. But welcome to the Gospel Reality thank Podcast. You. It's so good to be here. I'm no, excited. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And before we go anywhere, I need to ask you this. You are actually not just a pastor's wife. You're also a pastor as well. Yeah, that's right. I'm also a pastor. Both my husband and I, um, we are the senior pastors of Relentless Love Church, which is in Pretoria Equestria. Yeah. Um, we've been pastors for the last four years for our own church, but we've been serving in ministry for close to 20 years. I don't look it, but yes. <laughs> 20 years? 20 years. Oh, and when did you, where, did, where did you study um, uh, Bible school? I was in my father and mother-in-law's church, Light of the Nations in Polokwane, and they had their own Bible college. 
Um, so that's where I got my certificate and diploma in ministry. In ministry? Yeah. Oh, is, is that where you saw your husband? <laughs> that's where I saw my husband. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to inherit all of this. <laughs> 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 but thank you very much. I, I saw Relentless Church. Is a, it's quite a small church. Yes. But the the... The equipment and the gear you guys have in there—it's <laughs> overkill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it is it is it a passion or do you just strive for excellence? Yes, um, you know, I actually just spoke to my husband about this yesterday. We yeah. were saying, like everything that we do, we do in excellence. My husband is one of those very perfectionist perfectionist kind of people yeah. so everything needs to be in order and oh. he's the brains behind the way the building looks and the yeah. sound and the equipment um, I'll bring the pretty touches to it and the catering side of things but he's all equipment um, yeah very yeah. driven in that area and very clued up so yeah, no? yeah. It, it, it really sounds like a you guys are a united front you know? <laughs> and and you guys have been married for uh, almost 11 years, 11 years 11 in January, years. yeah. Is there a time in that 11 years where we felt like, what am I doing here? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what? I respect your honesty. Absolutely. Oh, my word. Like, especially when there's pressure. Mm. When the pressure starts building up, you know, when things are going smooth, it's, ugh, it's you know, it's a walk it's, in the park. Course, yes. But the minute you throw in children, sickness, finances... So, and starting a church, oh my oh. word, starting a church from scratch was very tempting to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's, we got an honest one today. <laughs> <laughs> Those people lie when they get you. Some people. I actually laugh, like in COVID times yeah. when we were stuck with each other in the house, you couldn't go anywhere. There was one day we had a fight and I actually literally walked out. And then I realized, I can't go anywhere, so <laughs> I'm stuck with you, so I came all the way back. <laughs> so, so, so pastors and, 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 and their wives, they actually do fight. Oh, yeah. We don't float to the toilet like some of you think. Really? Like, no, man. I thought pastors, they kneel down and they pray. Let's no, pray about it. No, it, get, it, it gets get, intense it, sometimes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad somebody's honest about this, you know. And um, uh, talking about that, you know, we all know and understand that marriage marriages are generally under attack. Mm, definitely. And I think the most important question I want to ask you is, through all the hard work, the kids and everything, how do you how do you maintain your being, your you being you, besides being besides the titles, yes. husband, pastor's wife, mother? How do you maintain you? I, you know, we do live in a very selfish world at the mm. moment, very self-centered and where everything is just me, myself and I. And I've taken a little bit of a different approach. Um, I find if I just focus on myself, I get very worn out and down and I need to be able to find something that is a passion for myself. But in finding that passion for myself, it needs to be a, about giving of myself. So like... Um, I was talking to the church yesterday, part of me rejuvenating and being who I am, I need to have quality appointments with people. I love people. So that makes me actually, it's strange enough, but it, it makes me me. Really? Is being with other people and sitting down with them. So I have a quality appointment with someone at least once a week. It can be a stranger, it can be a client of mine, it can be a family member, but that just makes me... What do you call it? A quality appointment? A quality appointment. To check their state of being and check... Yeah, it's, it's where I, f I stop focusing on myself because if I focus all on myself, I feel overwhelmed, all my problems. And I sit down with someone and I let them talk instead of me. Oh, really? And I start to realize, like, oh, man, my life is actually not that bad, you know. <laughs> and it actually brings me some strength. So, but it's also important just to have you time as well. Like, just this, my husband's very much into go and do your nails and go yeah. and just have some lady time and yeah. get your hair done. He's very, he's awesome like it. <laughs> so, wait, wait a minute. So, you, both of you are pastors. Yes. Who's the head pastor? So we don't, I don't see it as who's the head pastor. My husband's very much, if he had to pass away tomorrow, we've seen it with a lot of churches. If the husband or the head mm. of the church passes away, the church just dis disintegrates. Where does the church go? Yeah. Or you have leaders fighting to take the rank. Yeah. It's not like that with us. We're a team. Um, we've always worked with each other for years. There's never been a time where we don't work with each other. And so for us, it's we both senior pastors. If he okay. had to pass away tomorrow, the church wouldn't crumble. 
I'm right there. <laughs> I, think, I think passing away is a bit extreme. It's but a bit extreme. Say he, yes. he goes away and work for, 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 yes. for two weeks. Then you... I can still run the church. This weekend, for example, he had to work at work because we have jobs mm. other than the church. And um, he was exhausted. I could see he was mm. physically down and out. So I said to him, listen, I'm taking the service today. And just being able to do that, we both have that. There's days where I can't do it anymore and he jumps in. So it's teamwork. All right, <laughs> you guys are actually proper pastors, the, the both of you. We've, oh. we've been trained by the best. By the best, right? <laughs> yes. So now, has he, has he ever come off the pulpit and you're like, oh, darling, no, today, no. What were, what were you thinking? <laughs> no. Hey. Oh, gosh, now I need to think about this one. Um, no, not necessarily, my darling, what were you thinking? But more like maybe that was a bit too harsh. Um, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, we need to think about where people are at at the moment. <laughs> and, oh you know, we often do talk about our messages and how yeah. they came across. And we, we often, even before the service, after the service, discuss it and yeah, but I don't think I've ever gone like, no, that was that was really bad. <laughs> but, but your pillar talk as pastors must be boring. Because now you talk about scriptures now. No, not at <laughs> all. I think it's important that as a pastoral couple that you have something outside of church that you enjoy yes. completely. Otherwise, yes, it's just church, 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 and you. Yeah. It's it's a dangerous place to be in, a very dangerous place to be in. No, for sure. I've, I've, I've noticed, and I've seen your church, please, we need to come and visit your church. Eh? Yes, please. My, my, me and my family. <laughs> yes. you've, you've seen my boys. Yes, I've so seen your we boys. Want, we need to come and visit your, your, your church. But people don't understand the pressures of being, pressure, pressures, pressures of being a, a, a pastor's wife, you know. Mm. Certain expectations that, yes. you know, you're expected to, to do or behave. Yes, a think, certain way. A certain way. Yes. What are the misconceptions that you've, you've, and I've seen that, especially white churches, you guys are more liberal, you know, you can, <laughs> you know, you can do your own things, you know, you're not governed by a lot of laws, you know, you just, mm. I've seen a, a white church and they were, the guy, pastor was preaching in shorts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've seen that too. <laughs> That's cool. I'm like, for, for my understanding, there's nothing wrong, but what are the misconceptions you think uh, I think the biggest thing is pressure um, to act a certain way, to be a certain way, to talk a certain way, to dress a certain way. There is actually that pressure. Um, and sometimes you actually don't get it from your church as much as you get it from other pastors. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's the, one of the things that I had to die to is people's opinions of me. Mm. Um, like, I really do believe about being real, authentic. Like, people need to know. I have struggles i have anxiety um i have been depressed before so badly like you know i i have kids that drive me crazy and i'm not going to pretend like i'm the perfect mom like <laughs> three, of them, eh? three boys it's it's chaos in our house i think you've been there before i don't know if you've seen all my kids all together in one place but i've seen two yeah. it's chaos and just having it all together people think that you're perfect and you know, um, one of the biggest challenges for my family was after my mother-in-law passed away from cancer, mm -hmm. um, we went through a really rough patch. We found out four months later, my son was completely deaf. And then, yeah, I've got a completely deaf son, my second born. And he must be the, the one I've, lived, I've not met. He's the one with the long hair. I don't know if you've seen no, the, the long hair. Yeah, yeah, you've never because met Because I've him. spoken to both of them. Yeah, he's, he's completely deaf. So after my mother-in-law passes away from cancer, who we never imagined, mm. I have a deaf son now. We're going through financial troubles. And all of a sudden, people are looking at us like, like we're not supposed to have troubles. You're a pastor. But how does it deal with your faith then? It was, it was some of the toughest moments of my life because I also start questioning God. Like, why me, Lord? I gave my life for the church. I'm serving in ministry, everything, you know. I'm, I'm helping your people. And now this, my mother-in-law dies from cancer. My son's deaf. We're going through financial troubles. Um, it was a really tough time. But I must say, like in the time when people started looking at us like we were crazy, it was like God's, that's how our church was birthed. We called it relentless love because mm -hmm. we felt this intense, relentless love. Like it just didn't stop. And it wasn't from the people we thought we would, 
be with forever. Mm. It was directly from God. You had to find that place where your strength comes from, not people. It comes directly from God. And that sounds yeah. like a sermon now, eh? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. It sounds like a sermon. Wow, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your... About your I, I didn't know that. And Look, he's, he's talking now. He's got cochlear implants, so... Um, he can hear with technology yeah. and I mean, it's incredible. He doesn't shut up now. <laughs> he talks. He talks so much. So we don't rely on sign language um, with the technology. Okay. He's got uh, cochlear implants yeah, yeah. Um, and that allows him to be able to hear sound electronically. So it's slightly different to normal mm -hmm. sound, but he can hear, he can hear and, he can talk. and he's starting to talk. Yeah. So wow, it's amazing. That, that must have taken a lot of strength from you. Eh? A lot of strength, a lot of money. Mm. Um, they are crazy expensive. And then you turn around and say, but you're white, you've got money. Oh, yeah. no. You know, <laughs> when, when we found out that he was deaf, yeah. uh, they told us about cochlear implants. Yeah. And we thought, great, we can get this. 750000 <laughs> It was like, who has that in Whoa. their back pockets? Like, it was a very, very um, hard time for me. In fact, for a whole month, I told no one that he was deaf. I was too afraid what people would think. Um, so no one knew about it. I, that, I think that was the time where I really struggled with depression and anxiety because there's yeah. stuff to help my son and I can't get it. You can't get it. And um, how did you raise the money? We did a fundraiser. So I'm actually Portuguese. And um, the Portuguese community, like, when you go through travel, they stick together. Really? That is, it's something it's, amazing. It's like the Zim community in, in South Africa. Uh, really? Even the Indian yeah. culture, I think, is very much like that as well. Yeah. But, yeah, we stick together. And someone that I didn't know, a complete stranger, I decided to put his story out on Facebook and let everybody know that my son mm. was deaf. We're raising money for cochlear implants. And um, this complete stranger contacted me from the Portuguese community and said, we're going to throw a huge party on behalf of your son. And in that night, they raised just over 300,000 rands. So wow. it was incredible. Um, and I was able to get his first cochlear implant. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> if I raise, uh, that, if I try to raise with a party, <laughs> <laughs> hey, my black friends, <laughs> give me a thousand. <laughs> yeah. If you're lucky. <laughs> if I'm lucky. But I'm, I'm glad you could, you could get the help, you know? Yeah. Because... Um, uh, talking about money, people assume that a white churches have, have got endless supplies of uh, uh, funding and mm. resources. Yeah. Please take us through the difficulty in actually starting your church. Yeah. Where the finances come come from, and 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 yeah. Yeah. So when we started our church, we were fortunate enough to inherit a lot of. Um, our equipment from my father and mother-in-law's church, oh. which was a huge blessing. But my husband has always been a saver. Yeah. So he doesn't like spending his money. Yeah. So um, like I said, I don't know if I already mentioned it, but both him and I work, we've got full-time jobs. Um, and so any time my husband gets money, he'll spend it on equipment and then use it to generate income. Correct. So that's how he... So we, a lot of our equipment is our own personal equipment, sound yeah. equipment. Yeah. Um, and a lot of like the chairs and stuff like that came from our parents-in-law's um, church. But there is a huge, huge financial burden, burden mm -hmm. to start a church. Start a church. Um, and then you've got, you've got this church building now, but now you've got to pay it every single month. Mm -hmm. And the church does rely on donations. It's not like it, we sell anything um, we don't sell no anointing oil and <laughs> it's an avenue, like you right? It's can, an avenue. <laughs> you can, but, uh, you can you know, sell holy water, you know? Exactly. <laughs> we don't sell anything, so we do rely on donations. Uh, but and then, does your husband write books? He doesn't write books. It's something that I would I would love to look okay. into. I feel like I could do That's that. An extra source of it is an extra there. source of income. But a lot of the time we have to financially carry the church. Um, which is can be very pressurizing yeah, yeah, on your family. And, you know, it, it's really tough. Um, I remember there was one month where we really, like, we didn't have money for rent, but we're going to sort out the church, you know. How? Wait a minute. <laughs> How is, do you do this? Is, this? is this why? I think I've been to your house three times. And every time <laughs> I come through, it's a different house. No, no, don't go to the old house. Come to, the, what's happening and um, I, I don't know if it ties into this, but 
the first house was like humongous. And the next one, you kind of stepped it down a bit. And this one, it seems like you, you stepped it down a bit. <laughs> was that the reason? Yeah, we've been through some financial troubles, um, challenges financially. And really? we, we don't believe in like we, we need to... Um, you need to live within your means. Yeah. So you can't expect to now the church to be paying for your mansion and your fancy car and your petrol and all that kind of stuff. And Wait. you let the church suffer. I, I, I don't know. Wait. I can't do that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've, <laughs> I've been clearly in the wrong churches. So wait a minute. So you, wait. Do you guys draw salaries from the church? Um, not at the moment. At the moment, we have full-time jobs. So You've got full-time jobs. Full-time jobs, both my husband and I. Um, we felt like that was the right thing to do. So there was a stage where we were renting a building um, only on a Sunday. So we would come in and set up and break yeah. down, which was, it was taxing, taxing on taxing. not only us, but our volunteers. Yeah. You start to see the volunteer group in the beginning is this massive but group. And then at the end, out. it's like three people. <laughs> and there was even one Sunday where it was just my husband and I. So we decided to put in the money into getting our own building. Um, so you bought your own building? Not, not bought our own building, but a permanent place oh, that permanent we, place, we yes. can have right through the week, um, Monday to Sunday. And obviously that costs more than just having a place on a Sunday. Um, so that's when we decided, no, we're going out, we're going to work, we're going to find jobs. And yeah, we're both full-time working. Full -time. People don't know, you You sell houses, right? I sell houses, yes. yes. So you see, you must get that uh, uh, that water, and that oil. <laughs> Every house you sell, you must... Sprinkle it, sprinkle highly <laughs> water. <laughs> That would be funny. I'd love to see that. So you've got a full-time job. Your yeah. husband's got a full-time job. Yeah. What then? What do pastors during, do during during the week? Uh, for the season we're in, yeah. we've got a very small church at the moment. We're still in, in growing stages. And it just feels like to just be focusing on the ministry and not looking after our family doesn't make sense. Um, also, the Bible says that if a man of God can't look after his own household, he's worse than an unbeliever. He, so he has denied his faith and is worse than an exactly. unbeliever. Exactly. So it makes no sense to just sit there during the week when you've got the small church, hardly anyone's counsel. Um, we can't throw a lot of events or church functions or conferences. Or so what are we doing? Yeah. So we're going to put our hands to work. And also I feel like it brings me so much compassion. Now when my volunteers come to church tired, yeah. I know what they feel like. Yeah. I know what it feels like to get up and have to get to work and put your hands to work, to bring in an income, to push hard, to meet those goals. When your boss says you've got to meet this need, I know. 100%. And you have so you guys tie to the church? Yes. And you yeah, we to you know what? Church. Before before I forget this, you said your mother in law died of cancer, yeah. and your and your son was deaf, yeah. and your mom now has cancer. My mom now has cancer. It's crazy. I think that's like people feel like you know hard times don't come to pastors or come to Christians. It's the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yeah. And if you look at my mom in law, I, no one would ever think. Wow. She would die from cancer. If you ever met my mother-in-law, uh, Pastor Belinda Lindley was incredible. What a woman of faith. And, you know, on her tombstone, it actually says, died believing, because she never once said, I'm going to die from cancer. It was always, I'm trusting God for my health. I'm trusting God, believing for his healing. And, you know, it didn't work out the way it went. Wow. But there's a huge testimony in my son being deaf. I mean, we reach out to the deaf community now. I mean, I get to relate to parents of deaf children. I get to bring them hope and say, hey, it's not the end of the world. It feels like it's the end. It feels like your son mm. is never going to talk. Or, But, I mean, it's incredible to see where my son was and where he's come now. And and your mom being, being also uh, uh, having cancer, going through chemo, mm. what burden does that have on you? Yeah. It's, Especially emotional burden. Yeah. So um, the last three days I've had this heavy migraine and I couldn't understand where it's coming from. And I realized it started the day I found out, the day my mom went for chemo. Yeah. And we found out that not only does she have cancer, but now she's torn her one shoulder and she has to go for surgery on that. And like all of that just builds up tension. It, it, and. It, it, yeah. pressure and emotionally you feel a bit drained it's like isn't this enough now you know yeah. 
Um, but she's also an incredible woman of faith. Um, I've, I've, like I said, I've learned from the best. She's extremely strong, and I know she'll come out of it. So. <sighs> I pray the strength of God in your, upon Thank your you. life because <laughs> that's, that's not easy. No, it's not that's, easy. That, it's f- far from it, far from it. Yeah. Phew, let's move on because now I'm feeling, <laughs> you, know, you know, our moms, you know, people don't yeah, know that. Yeah, our moms. Our moms <laughs> remain our moms exactly, forever. Exactly, forever. And, and it's like no matter kids. how old you get. Yes. Yeah. My mom thinks, still thinks I'm 10. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I actually commend you that you could downscale yeah. so that you could, because for me, the house I'm staying in, what would people say? I must stay there. <laughs> <laughs> but I also feel like Down now, grading. if I get a big house or yeah. I drive a fancy car, it was, I worked hard. No one can come and point fingers and say, oh, it's the church that paid for your car. Because that's what you get a lot in the church world. Like, oh, they drive fancy cars because the church paid for it. No, no, no. I worked hard you, for You worked hard car. for it. Yeah. And the church community, um, uh, uh, their support towards you. Or the lack of how how's how's your, your your relationship with that? Because people assume that pastors' wives, you know, they carry your bags. You've got special chairs. You see, you sitting on a special <laughs> chair now. You've got special chairs next to your husband one, and they feel like you're living a life of opulence. Yeah. So you have to come visit my church because <laughs> I think going through the hardships that we have, like yeah. one of the biggest things is it's brought us down to earth. Um, we don't let anyone carry our Bibles. I can carry it myself. That's why I have two hands. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have special chairs. You'll no special f- chairs? No special chairs. You'll find me in the kids' church with the kids. You'll find me at the back in the lyrics. You'll find me everywhere. Um, I, I don't feel like, I, I don't know. I feel like the generation we're living in now is looking for real and authentic. They're not looking for someone who walks in on a magic cloud. Yeah. They're looking for real and authentic. And I don't know, something changed in my heart when I saw my mom-in-law die from cancer. Being able to experience that and going through financial pressures and going out and working and having a son who's got a disability, something changed inside of both my husband and I. It's like it brought us down to earth. And I think that that's where we need to be. Look at Jesus. Where was he? He wasn't on the pedestals. He was Mm -hmm. within the crowd. He was with the people. And I feel like that's... I mean, John and I like to visit the people in our church. We don't want our leaders. And yes, we're lucky and fortunate to have a small church where we can still go to everyone's house. Yeah. But it's so important for us to have that one-on-one time with the people in our church. If you had to ask me what's going on in her life, I know. Really? I know. I know what's going on. But it would be difficult to maintain that yes. when the church grows. Absolutely. Because you see, I've, I've been around a lot of churches that started off. Mm-mm. And, you know, you can just go to the pastor, hey, man, the symbols need this. And when the church grows, you must go through the secretary. Through the space. I'm like, hey, which one is this? So, and, yeah. And it becomes, it becomes that transition becomes, becomes, becomes tough. Yes. And I believe that uh, it's a concerted effort that leaders should, should know, man, you know. Yes. I know, it, you know, when, when, when the church grows, the, the responsibilities grow, but yeah, I don't. It doesn't really have to go via via, at all. No. especially with your long time people who've been serving with exactly. you. Exactly. I mean, we found that as pastors who have grown up in in a well known ministry in yeah. South Africa, and then we know these pastors, we know them very well. And yeah. then when we ask to see them, it's like you have to go through this. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know. Yeah. But. I, like I said, we've been taught by the best. My father-in-law mm. had a church of almost 3,000 people in Pulakwani. And mm. you know, before I ever knew him as my father-in-law, he was just my pastor. Every morning at church, he was outside shaking everybody's hands. Mm. And I loved that about it. Correct. Is He was also very into people and yeah. wants people. And I understand when your church grows big, you can't expect your pastor to come knocking on your door. It would just be physically impossible. 100%. And that's why I think it's important for you to throw yourself into your leaders as well, that yeah. they carry that same heart. Because sometimes it goes a bit wonky along the way. You can't forget the people you started with. You can't forget the people you started with. Absolutely. Yeah. They've been there for years. How can you forget them? And I, and I saw your church, um, the, um, the diversity in the church. Yes. It's cool. So uh, now, you know, the, the, the other difficult thing is having different races, under one under one roof, it, it limits you. Not really limits.
limits you, but you can't do things as you see them fit. You need to think about, hey, we've got these other people, music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the music also has, has to translate, and uh, it's, it's, it's a different era that we're living mm. in now. You know, we're living in the new South Africa. Yes. <laughs> <Go> Boke. So, <laughs> so um, how, how do you deal with that as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a pastor? Yeah. Because I'm not going to call you a pastor's wife now. <laughs> after you've explained. As a pastor, like, how, do you, how do you keep the synergy going? Yeah, so I, like I said, we've been privileged to grow up in a very multi-racial, multi-cultural yeah. um, church from Pulakwani days. And our church is still very much like that, even though it's a different name, a yeah. different city. Um, I think the challenge comes in when you have so many different cultures is like when it comes to counseling. Um, if you think about you dealing with a black couple and they have marriage problems, you need to understand a little bit about their culture because you know that they go to the elders for help. Um, or if a colored person in your church dies, you need to understand a bit about their culture that when they die, you've got to be there. You literally move into their house to help them out and you cook for them. And <laughs> so you've got to understand the different cultures. And it also does make it a bit challenging because in the end, the culture that yeah. makes, like, you know, complete sense is kingdom culture. And so it is difficult when you have to counsel different cultures to remind people that in the end, it's what the word of God says is true, not necessarily what your elders say or what your Oma Khruki said, mm. or, you know. But having said that, it's beautiful. Having different cultures in the church is incredible. So, um, I mean, when I, when I came to your... To your recent house, the the CRC is like on the <laughs> corner there. Would it not was it not easier for you guys to say, let's just go serve there? Um gosh, now you're putting me on the spot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um no, it wasn't look, it would have yes, it would have been easier, easier yeah? to just go in and jump in in an already established church, but I think it's also what God's placed on the inside of John and I. So you've got to, like, remember. What did God tell first? That's what I wanted to ask. Um, so actually, it was, it was funny. We, we both sat talking one day because mm. we actually stepped out of ministry after my mom and law passed mm. away. Um, we stepped out of ministry. My father-in-law handed that massive church of youth to mm. another pastor who's still running it today. And we stepped out completely. Wait a minute. Can we <laughs> pause it right there? Okay, yes. Your father-in-law didn't give your husband, Jonathan, no. the church. So he it, gave it to... Another. Somebody else. So, yes, he gave, he handed the church over. People like to say we sold the church. That's mm. the biggest load of nonsense I've ever heard. We literally handed the church. He has the people, building, the, the building, people, the ground, the everything. We like to see it as we sowed for our future. Um, at the time of my mom in law passing away, our family was going through a lot of hurt. Both yeah. John and I have always served my parents in laws from day one. And my father-in-law was really struggling. And so yeah. we felt it doesn't make sense to now so focus on my father-in-law and the church takes strain. Mm. I mean, the church has already taken strain. It's been almost a year of us being a, away from the church to try to focus on my mom-in-law. It's time that someone else steps in and has, you know, the full support of the church or, or gives full support to the church. Oh, so we stepped minute. completely out of ministry. Yeah. We, we gave our jobs away as well, if you think about it like that, because we oh, were full yeah. time. Yeah. That's your retirement, I knew it. <laughs> How do you just, 2,000 people. Sunday collection is, is, <laughs> is, 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 is a lot of money right there. 2,000 people is a lot. We gave that and away. we're living in an era where uh, um, parents or parents or pastors who have a church, have got this deep desire to pass it on to their kids. Yeah. Because it's a family, I won't say business, but it is. It's a family legacy. legacy yeah, it's legacy. You know? Yes. And we're so used to that, you know? Mm. We've, we've asked, is, is, is church a business? Why does it have to be passed on to pastors, mm. kids, and, 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 and. And you here saying, we saw all the money that was coming in, and we said, take it. We said that. Like I said, it was, wow. it was a thing of, what does the church need? Not What's the what name of the church we in Pulukwane? Uh, well, it's now called 3C Ministries, Pastor yeah. Bert Pretorius. Yeah. He took over the church. Really? Um, it was Light of the Nations, now it's 3C Ministries. Um, and 
I think the church had been so hurt through yeah. like not seeing their spiritual leadership and mm. You know, um, we had a pastor there that was looking after the church on behalf of our family who had ulterior motives. Yeah. <laughs> and so the church was really hurt. And we have we really believe that if a church is really hurt, change the name, burn it down, get new pastors, but bring blood. in fresh blood. Yeah. And at the time, Pastor Bert, he, I mean, he's still very much involved in my mm. husband and I's life. We love him to bits. And he took on, he had a heart for Limpopo province and he's doing incredible work there. Wow. And we thought there was no one better to take over that. And believe me, my husband's heart is, is if he you had to ask me, if you, if you had him here today, yeah. his heart is sore. He misses Fulakwani, he misses the church. Hey. But at the time, we knew that was the right decision to make. You don't know some so. black churches. <laughs> you need new blood. This blood is a blood of Peter. So I'm not <laughs> going anywhere. 2,000 members. Do you know how long it takes you for you to 35 gather? 35 years. It's not easy. People, it's not easy. And to come and start our own church, like being used to so many people and then you come to church on a Sunday and there's like under 50 people there. It's like, oh, Lord. It's a challenge. And that's why I say it. I think I've grown in leaps and bounds in the last five years than I have in the last 30-something years of my life. Wow. And, (laughs) Wow. It's, yeah, wow. it's been different. <laughs> no, 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 you, you guys are built different. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's where I'm going to leave it. And any aspirations of going to Australia? No way. <laughs> no. Do, do you generally love it in South Africa? I love South Africa. I can't, I don't know, I, I just, like, you know, we talk about cultures mm-hmm. and stuff. I don't know if I can deal with overseas culture. <laughs> I don't know. But it's just beautiful. I think if I ever had to move anywhere it would be Cape Town and the only reason is because it's so beautiful down there and the ocean just draws me but I can't imagine leaving South Africa like it just doesn't make sense to me I'm still I'm still to give give a church (laughs) and you know the struggles that you're struggling with 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 this with it with a young church you know that church is past that yeah Hey man, hey man, Ponzo. <laughs> <laughs> what do you and um, do you guys? No man, maybe I shouldn't have. Do you guys still have shares in the church? No, not at you can all. Can see I'm black. Eh? I want to know. <laughs> Was your sweat in vain? Nothing, at all. <laughs> Nothing. My Christmas tree is still sitting there for, in the church. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ponzo, do you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to find out um, with your current church. Are you guys, do you guys have staff or is it so small that, and if you do, uh, what are the responsibilities, what do they do? It's so small that we are the staff. Okay. <laughs> now at the moment we are the staff. We've got a leadership team um, that we do delegate responsibilities to them. Um, like for example, we've got an older couple that we um, encourage to start like a life group specifically for older people because yeah. they can reach older people um we've got youngsters that focus on the youth um but we don't have staff at the moment i am the graphic designer i am the pastor i am the wife the the kids church administrator it's yeah look it's 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 a fun stage to be in because like i said you get to know everybody intimately but it's also difficult like having all those roles i get peopled out from other people's kids (laughs) Oh so, my goodness. Yeah. And like I said, you white churches are generally very liberal, you know. Yeah. Do things your own way. How do you deal with the LGBTQI community? Yes. So any anyone can serve, especially in the music department. Yeah. So um my stance on this is like we've been asked to marry a couple and we won't it's not biblical um that a man and a man or a woman and a woman should be married so we we would never do that and uh, you know i do believe there's coming a time where that's going to change in our governments and our policies that you're going to have to do that and then take me off as a pastor i'll change my name <laughs> because i i won't do that however yeah. um we are open to having the LGBTQT whatever um, mm. people in our church. We've got people that have um, previously been gay, for example, and have asked for help to get mm-hmm. out of it. We don't force it. We don't 
anoint them with oil and pray. We just let them come and experience the love of God. Yeah. Because in the end, I can't change anyone. Only yeah. God can. And musicians? Musicians, yeah. Do you allow, would you allow them to serve? The one that we do have in our church, he does serve. He's not in the music team. But my thing is, I have someone that's in my music team that carries so much pride. What difference does it make? Hey, man. In fact, I've had people in our church, I'm talking about not now, mm. in our Light of the Nations days, um, that cause so much division, worse than any LGBTQT person could yeah. ever do that was serving in the music ministry. So I don't say that they're not allowed to serve because I stand up preaching and I'm not perfect. Well, um, however, like I say, I won't marry the couple. You won't marry them. I won't marry them, yeah. I, okay. <laughs> Fine. Look, maybe that's the wrong person I'm asking, but for you, for you to repent, you must be willingly doing something wrong, right? Do you believe people choose to be in that? Do, do, to do be you gay? Do you believe? Choose, that? yes. It's definitely a choice. To say they're born like that is no. That is not true. The Bible says we're made in the image of God, and if the Bible is against like the Bible is against murder. Mm. The Bible is against gossip. Murder is me going to murder him. Yeah. <laughs> murder you. But if if at the age of five, six, yeah. and I've got friends and I've seen people yeah. at those ages, they show different uh, characteristics in their yeah. in their upbringing, and you, you could, we surely can't say they chose. No. Like, my my son came to me the other day and he said, Mommy, um, I like pink and he wants to wear a dress. Mm. It's my job as his mom mm. to remind him that you're a boy, you're not a girl. And to instill in him from a young age that, hey, it's nothing wrong with pink. You want to wear pink? Boys wear pink all the time. It's fine. Salmon, they call it. <laughs> but you're not putting on a dress. You're a boy. You're not. Okay. I, I don't know. It's, it's a, a very there's a guy I know. <laughs> there's a guy I know who the child is in primary school. Yeah. And the boy, they tease him because he's showing, you know, he's always with girls. And he tried talking to him. No, he must chill with boys, but he, he likes playing with mm. dolls. Primary school. Mm. So at that point, you can't say, no. you know. And, and I asked him, I said, what if he turns out gay? He says, well, what can I do with my child? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, let's bring it home. If yeah. it was you. If it was me. And your child. Yeah. What would you do? It, it's like I said, it's it's such a tough situation. It's true. What would I do if it was my son? I would love him. I would mm. never want to shun him away because mm. he's gay. Correct. Um, that's why I say, like, I'd rather have those people in my church. And if God chooses to change them, mm. I can't change them. So if your child one day says, Mom, this, I've been... And they say moms can tell. Yeah. Mom, I've been meaning to tell you this. And uh, yeah, I'm with, I'm with Sipu. <laughs> or I'm with uh, <laughs> John. <laughs> and we want to get married. Will you not attend the wedding? Wow, that's a tough one. And we need to talk I, about these because yeah. anything is anything. Anything eh? is possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I won't marry them. <laughs> okay, not you. I need you but, to attend the wedding. Look, I think I would attend the wedding yeah. for the love of my son. I love my son. I'd never want to put something against him. Like, for me, um, in anything in life, if love has changed my heart or, mm. you know, there's been... So I'd rather want to show him love yeah. and I don't... I want to say acceptance. I love you the way you are. Mm. Um Am I happy about it? Probably not. Okay. No, fair, <laughs> fair. I think I, I think you're fair. Yeah. And and your church only goes on for an hour, right? That's a funny one because <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a black lady come up to our church the other day and she asked, "What time does it end?" So I said, "Ten thirty. No, this isn't church. And she walked out. <laughs> I laughed so much. For so. how long? Is it one hour, thirty minutes? Well, it depends. Like we we've got a clock but we don't have one of those countdown clocks yeah. so we just go with the flow but, but we don't roughly, also go with the sun <laughs> so roughly we finish around 11 so 9 to 11 9 to yeah. 11 2 hours yeah okay hey, 
I, my husband always says, what are we going to do when we grow? Because our church is, you know, our building isn't too mm. big. And he's like, we'll go to two services. I'm like, how are we going to get that right? Because then we're going to have to stick to a clock. And yeah. I don't know if I can do that. It's hard. <laughs> I've, I've seen white churches, eh? Yeah, they uh, stick to clocks. Yeah, like literally, well, countdown see, clock. Yeah, you see the pastor, I've been to uh, City Life. Yeah. And I think 11 o'clock, the, finish, the church finishes. When he looks up, he starts closing the, 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 the... Yeah, he knows the already. <laughs> Dania, thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> and tell me, there's a fight between uh, Joy Celebration or Michael W. Smith <laughs> in my churches. I could know. Uh, do you, do you, are there South African... Gospel artists that are your favorite. Dr. Toomey is amazing. Dr. Like Toomey? My, my husband sings Dr. Toomey like, ooh, really? brilliant. Yeah? <laughs> no, he, my husband sings. He's got an amazing voice. Really? But, yeah, Dr. Toomey is amazing. He was actually at Dr. Toomey's concert. When was it? Two the weeks ago? Three three weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, Dr. Toomey is awesome. She, my mom in law at a memorial service, one yeah. of her favorite songs. Is Dr. Dr. Tumi. But Dr. Tumi is, you know, he's... Yeah, he's, he, yeah, he can do both. Who's yeah. African? Which African artist can you oh, say? Gosh. I, That's a difficult one because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But um, who do you listen to? Uh, Hillsong, obviously. No. Um, no, if I, I, no, Hillsong is nice in yeah. my teenage years, I guess, yeah. but not right now. Um, I'm very... Yeah, which again, I wouldn't say is really, I mean, he's colored. Yeah. Tora, Tora, Torin Wells. Yeah. Um, I really like his music. I love, um, what's their name now? I'm trying to think of their name now. Oh, gosh. Google Worship? Uh, no, they're from America. Then I don't uh, know any South African. I'm you don't know think. Loiso? Yeah, Loiso, I know. He's actually been to our church before. Really? A lot of the nations, yeah. I think people are sleeping on his music. This guy is very... He's, he's got an he's amazing, amazing voice. But you see, I've all I've heard his songs that he's... Like from other people's covers that he yeah. sang. Um, I haven't really listened to any of his must own... Check the, especially the Love Complete album. Yeah. It's proper. <laughs> so you've, you've got no... Besides Dr. Dumi. Yeah, I think because Dr. Toomey is my favorite. So every white person will say Dr. Yeah. Toomey, yeah, Kayam Tetwa, but there's no joy celebration of Benjamin Dube song that you like. My husband likes Benjamin Dube. So really? Yeah. It's, I think that comes from like his days in Pulakwani ah, and growing up there. And, I see. I um, see. But yeah, I, I have to say Dr. Toomey just because I really love his worship and his, his worship songs. Place, yeah. He's amazing. I've got his CDs. Yeah. <laughs> when we had CDs, I've got his songs on my phone yeah. now. Well, that's so. why I put them here. Because where else am I going to put them? But yeah, yeah this is his, my favorite album. Is oh, this one in, uh, yeah. in, in Love and Grace. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 he's dope. But I'm, I'm, and I'm, the last one I want to ask you is, that's the reason why I left it for last. Uh, how important is democracy? Why did you leave it for last? <laughs> you must be there. <laughs> okay, do you do you encourage your church members to vote? Yes, absolutely. I mean, and yes. for, for those who say, I vote for the kingdom of God, what do you, what no, do you say to them? Like, my thing is, as nice as the Christian parties are, are they really making a difference in our... Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, they're not. They're not. They're yeah. not making a difference. But um, I look, when I look at you, your blood is red, eh? <laughs> Like my issue with our country at the moment is yeah. everyone has something to say and everyone wants to complain and yet we're still causing so much issues ourselves. Yeah. Never mind we've got so much issues in government. Yeah. I mean we complain about the streets, but who's dumping there? It's us. It's us. You're absolutely right. So yeah. Do you think a Christian a Christian party can really make a difference? No. So no. a, Christ, a, a party, a, a party must be a party, political party. That's I, it. I feel like the Christian parties that are currently in our country should rather just team up with another <laughs> big party and make a difference. Um, but on their own, I don't feel like they're making a difference at all. And, and what is 
the Christian parties because there's so many types of religions and so many just in Christianity. Yeah. You've got the happy clappy. Of you've course. got the. I mean, so what do we choose now? How do that person won't work so with that person? So are you saying person? one person can't look after everyone? No, I feel like we need diversity. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like it would be better for those Christian parties to team up with bigger parties to make a difference in the country. Oh. So are you saying uh, a Christian party? Like a, a, a Christian voice is very important to be in parliament. Who can fight against when they say kids can do abortions? Yes. Don't you think that would be... Yes, no, absolutely. So I'm not discrediting the Christian parties, but I feel like on their own they can't get it done. But yeah. absolutely. They need, need to be in a party. In a party. And pushing that agenda. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. okay. I thought, yeah. I thought you'd say, no, we need... A spirit-filled party. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, that's the thing that makes me upset in churches yeah. is we become irrelevant to the people. And I think that's why it's important for me to go out and work because I need to feel what's going on in the world. I mean, as a pastor, you sit in your church. Do you ever go out and yes. see what's happening in the work world? Evangelism is very important. Eh? <laughs> exactly. And, and going out, that's when you see the real issues of the exactly. people. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Before we close it up, do you have a question? Yeah, I th uh, the question basically wants to, because you, guys, you said you're a small church, okay, so basically you guys only do Sunday, I believe, okay, so as a female pastor, uh, if the church was bigger, what responsibilities or what more things would you do as a female pastor? Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, our church is small, however, Feel like we are making a footprint in the community yeah um i think if we had a bigger church my my heart has always been to reach out to put my money where my mouth is and so i feel like if i had a bigger church that had more finances coming in um reaching out and actually like for example i don't want to just do school ministry like it's good and it's needed but I want to be able to go and find a church, oh, a school, sorry, and actually physically go and fix it up and actually put my mm. money where my mouth is and actually get involved within the community. Mm. So I think if I had a bigger church, that's where I would actually be trying to do more missions work. Um, yeah, and, and actually do something. I don't want the church just to be seen as a place where uh, we bring in all the money, but what do we do with the money? How are we making a difference out there? Mm. So, yeah. Now with That's that, what I would do. <laughs> with that, I need to ask you this. I've got a big issue with, and I love what churches are doing. They're going out there, doing ministry on the on the road, and giving to the needy. But does it have to be taken and shown on social media mm. and publicized? And is that not against biblical principles? Yeah. So I think there's a fine line towards us because. Um, it's not right for you to take a person in their struggles and post them on Facebook. And mm. you, you, their faces, their everything for mm. the whole world to see. I, I don't feel like that's right. However, there has to be some sort of social media campaign because people want to know where's the money going to. Correct. So um, I think it's important, like not to literally post everyone's faces, but to show people what you are doing. So you take photos of all the food that you bought yes. and. Um, maybe well, say, fine. you know, but not not to go out and be like, yeah, I'm yeah with so and so, and they just lost their job, and I'm yeah to come give them a thousand yeah. rand, and you know, yeah, because it seems like it seems like we become like politicians. Now. Yeah, it's like a selfie culture, I'm all about myself and yeah. what yeah, I'm doing. Uh, you don't have to say, hey, I bought you fish oil. No, we could take a picture as a group and say yes. we're going to deliver these things. Yes. But when we get to the people, yes. I feel like it's a make bit... it about the people, not yeah. about yourself. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, the last question. Okay, last two questions I've got <laughs> for you is: What would you like to see change in the modern church? What would I like to see change in the modern church? I think, well, I think it is already changing, to be honest. Like I said, I think the new generation of people that are rising up are wanting authentic and realness. And I feel like that is starting to change. Um, more and more pastors are becoming more approachable. Not all the time, but we they judge are. That one according to the size of the church. Yeah, yes. according to the size of the church. But then I'm looking at like a church like, for example, Rhema, yeah. who Joshua McCauley just took over. And um, the son. 
the son. The son that just took over. And he's got not just Rhema to look after. He's got Redemption, which is a massive church. He's got churches in the Netherlands. They've just opened one in Brazil. Um, And I must say, he's one of the people that you can pick up the phone and phone him and say, hey, I need some help. And although he's got a busy schedule, he's 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 there, and they've taken a bit of a different approach with their leadership. They there, they there with their staff. They actually like if there's a role model for me of what it looks like to run a massive church and still be there. I mean, like I say, you can't go knocking on everyone's door, but yeah. they're real and authentic, and they they there, yeah, and I, I enjoy watching them from a distance. Really? So, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a challenging situation. It's a challenging because hey, the pastor before him, the original, hey, hey, <laughs> <that one. laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> and um, if you are not a pastor's wife or a pastor, what would Pastor Jonathan miss out on? Oh, everything. Everything. <laughs> what would he not miss out on? <laughs> no, um, I think, yeah, we're such a good team together. We would yeah. both be missing out. Like um, my father-in-law said when I came into his life, he's like, I couldn't think of a better fit. Um, I thought it was an arranged marriage. It was an arranged marriage. We joke and we say it was an arranged marriage because I think his parents liked me before yeah. he did. <laughs> no, but um, I think like he doesn't have like that, although he's very um, prim and proper in how he wants his church to look like he doesn't have that organizational skills and that's where i come in like i bring the admin the organization that kind of thing so look man when i listen to you you sound like an authentic genuine person and i'm not casting aspersions on anyone but it feels like you know if like if your church was here i'll definitely because you just want to know that you know man it's not about the money it's about Mm. what difference can you make you give me, you give me that. What do you say? Give me that vibe. You feel that. Mm. Like, you, you feel authentic. So, I'm glad you could come through, man. I'm glad. I'm, this was awesome. I'm glad you could <laughs> come through. This was really cool. And I thought some of the questions were gonna get you off guard. <laughs> nothing. Like, you sound genuinely authentic. Thank you. So thank you very much for coming that through. It was awesome being here. Um, but the Gospel Reality Podcast, you don't, you don't just go, eh? <laughs> you don't just go. We've got, uh, we've got sponsors here. <laughs> there we go. We've got a sponsor called oh, that's cool. Le Tlotlo Laka, oh, nice. Treasure. Cool. So they've got uh, body butters. Oh, nice. And uh, shower gels. Oh, nice. So the shower gel it. is called Gezizon. Okay, cool. It means it washes sins. Oh, nice. It leaves it as white as snow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Please, wow, this is nice. This. Thank you so and much. That you That's so cool. Two Thank of you, you. <laughs> I encourage to take. And Thank before you, and before much. you go, um, oh, these are awesome. <laughs> we've got what we call we call them hot and cold. Okay, cool. When it's hot, it keeps hot things hot. It's like a flask. Yes, yes. And when it's cold, it keeps cold things. Nice. So you can choose which one. I'm gonna go with the red one. With the red one. <laughs> and this red one is popular. Eh? <laughs> so thank you. Oh, this, this is, is awesome. Thank you so much. This is from us to you. Thank you. This and is really cool. Thank you cool. very much for for engaging with us. Oh. Uh, to show that you got nothing to hide. <laughs> exactly. Eh? The only thing you didn't bring was a change break statement. <laughs> <laughs> next time. Next time. Invite me again. <laughs> that's the only thing you didn't bring. But other than that, I'd like to thank you very much thank for coming so through. Much. And uh, if we do call you again or call the husband, you must say hey. Go, because his turn is coming. Eh? Yeah, you need to get him one. <laughs> I need to get him one. <laughs> Our ladies and gentlemen, you heard it first on the Gospel Reality Podcast. Either than that, I'm Koto Ibe Lelo.